Today we are doing a voice recording instead of a video. Uh, don't ask me why. So, let us begin first with this video and the topic that it's going to discuss. This will be Phantom of the Opera. Um, it will be, of course, the Hobgoblin, a.k.a. Uh, Eric, the Phantom of the Opera himself, versus uh, Rawl, the Berserker. So, let's get this over with. As the environment surrounds into its alternate environment, taking place in the opera itself voluntarily underground, um, Christine and Rawl are in search ahead of everyone else that Eric has hidden himself from everyone. During the terrible dramatic reveal of his face. And as this happens, of course, Eric still hates Rawl. Since that Rawl is in search of trying to find him, Eric believes in which Rawl is trying to kill him. At, as this leads to its very dark conclusion, Eric prepares a trap in an attempt of stopping Rawl from doing this and proceeding with this action. So, of course, let's see if Rawl will take the reaction. Uh, roll a nine. Let me take a look at this. Okay. I take the reaction. I think he does. Okay, as he does... Well, maybe... No, hold up. I'm gonna look at this. I could assume he might have dodged the attack. Um, okay. Well, what's that? That's, uh... 2 plus 6, which is 8, does not hit. Um... Eric misses. Um... Rawl swings his attack posture against him. Uh, wow. My just rolled a four. Plus three is a seven. Uh, Eric, uh, swings his blade back to him again. That'll be a, oh, wow. Twelve plus two is a fourteen, which hits. Eric swings his sword, and as it does, it does weaken him. Uh, of course, that'll be a great sword damage. So that'll be 4 plus 2, which will be 6 piercing damage against Rawl. Okay. Uh, so I think next up would approximately be Rawl's turn, I think? Yeah. Alright, 6 plus 3 is a 9, which does not hit. That's a 10 plus 2 does not hit. Ooh, 16. Uh, a roll of taken of that attack previously from Eric will swing back to him again. Uh, Christine, uh, she attempts of trying to stop him, but he strikes anyway. And as he does, that will be, what is it? Great axe attack, 1, 2, 12. Uh, he picks up an axe from a nearby elite's watery surface on the ground. Since that the ground is wet in in the basement area. Alright, of course. That would be 6 plus 3. Which will be 9 slash damage. So, yeah. That'd, so that would be 9 damage. Um... Eric begins to grab chains in an attempt of trying to restrain Rawl of his next attack, which will have to be another attack roll. So 11 plus 2 is 13, which directly hits. Uh, okay, so that'll be... I could assume... Let me take... Alright, I'm assuming this will be uh, like a chains being... Uh, shoot, what is it? 2d4s. Uh... 
takes five bludgeoning damage from that. So, okay. And Raw is now grappled in the chains. And Raw is now grappled in the chains. Eric forces uh, Christine to confess her love to him specifically, apart from Raw. Because after of what the stage had portrayed of his ugly face for the entire audience to see him, he is infuriated by anyone to see his face again, even Rawl. So, of course, he aggressively dislikes him, and as such, he he demands her confession of love, is basically what that is. Of course, so yeah, that's basically what he's trying to say. Uh, as this happens, he... Okay, <laughs> I rolled a natural one, obviously... Eric is not going to do much. Uh, let's see what uh, Rawl does. Maybe he could break through. I don't think so. Um, Rawl still struggles within the chain's reach. He cannot get out. Uh, I've tried to roll in an attempt for him to break loose, but it fails. And sadly, he is still grappled in the chain's reach. Uh, Christine... Uh, does profess her love. She does this by walking a few, uh, what is it, 20, 30 feet to him, based on how far she had initially been from. Walks slowly toward him, and gently kisses him on the lips. Um, let's just see if this works, because you may never know. That is a 12 plus 1, which shall be a 13. Wait, hold up. Wait, it, it, it hits, does it not? It, it works. Yeah. Yeah, it works. Uh, Eric is now calm. He is now officially uh, calm from his anger and his fury. And as he is, he releases the chains. Uh, Raw does take an initial one point of... I don't know, like, I mean, he falls to the ground, so I could say bludgeoning. Topples to the ground, and he motions himself back up. Uh, Eric officially tells them to leave and never return. And they do so. Um, eventually, Eric does set off in an attempt of trying to leave his home. And in any means necessary, do not show his significant um, appearance as to how he was here from beforehand. He does this in a matter of time, which I'll have to roll to see how long until everyone arrives soon. Which, uh, let me see. So that'll be kind of like, I don't know. Yeah, let me roll. Uh, natural one. I just rolled a natural one from that. That's ab absolutely awful. A three. Uh, so in words, uh, it's going to take a, an awful lot while for Eric to pack up his things and take off. He doesn't pack much. He does bring his weapon. He brings certain things with him in an attempt of trying to run away. He does this in, you know, of course, a matter of time. Because <laughs> he rolled a one and a three uh, as to how they will find him. Uh, he, does, he does leave. Uh, they do arrive. Uh, for in a matter of, uh, probably a few 12, 15 minutes until then, probably 30, um, they do arrive, and as they do, yes, uh, uh, the Phantom of the Opera, uh, Eric, is not there. He is officially left, and, and, uh, there's no sign of him. The only sign that is there is the mask in which he is left there. Um, the mask in which he had worn of... Of the, uh, the party of the opera voluntarily. It means of wearing it during the masquerade party. Where people have wore the masks. Uh, the mask is left there. And of course they of course they see this as a similar mask in which he had worn during the masquerade party. They see this. And as they do, they know for sure that this, out of anything that they are finding in this place, is the last remnant of the phantom which has been left there. Supposedly. And of course... Um, 
Uh, of course, since that the Phantom has never been found, they do see that uh, that he has uh, used chains previously, as they could see from afar, in an attempt of trying to strangle someone, like what he had done to many people. So, okay, so I'm going to roll to see as to how many people he have already killed. Now, of course, this may be a little different from the musical as to how many particular people he had killed, actually, in, during the time being. But for now, let's just see as to how many he already killed so far. So, like, for starters, we're just going to roll 2d4s and see as to how many there were. And so it's going to be, uh, all right, 4, 3, 1. That's going to be 8. Um, uh, in this, in his storyline, he has, uh, previously had killed 8 victims during his Ring of Terror. And that is what he had done. So he does this, and, uh, yeah, these are previous victims, the previous 8 victims that he had killed. They know that he is, as we know, a very full-fledged murderer. I mean, 4 victims would have been a little different story. But eight victims is kind of a little much. Um, this might also include, as of course, that he had killed a person that had treated him unfairly as a young child. Speaking of which, I'm going to have to roll to see if he has been greatly affected by that event. So that, or he wasn't tortured and just he just was spoken verbally very arguingly. His story, uh, oh. Uh, natural one. Um... He was, he yeah, he was, above all, treated very unfairly, both physically and verbally at the same time. He has been treated absolutely with angst, and that he is, uh, he needed, that is why he had acquired that mask. Uh, Phantom does manage to escape, so yeah, I can tell you that. Uh, so basically, I guess that's it. Phantom escapes. Uh, Rawl is left with 55 health, uh, oh, and is ungrappled because the trains were released from his reach. Uh, Christine and Rawl, they, they escape, uh, although I must roll to see what the ending truly is. So, it'll be, I rolled a 5, I roll freaking low numbers in this, out of anything I've done. <laughs> uh, okay, I rolled a 5, so that ending particularly states that in some way Christine and Rawl start to grow a relationship, which in some way still does anger Eric to this day. Although, he can't do nothing about it because he has no home, they know where he lives, and he has left in an attempt of trying to run through. Um, so that's basically what the number five I had just rolled uh, is the alternate ending of what this is. Uh, as for Eric himself, let's see if that's a different story to handle. 16. Uh, uh, Eric is in search. Uh, uh, Eric is in search in which he's trying to find a woman out there, and yet he still struggles, but not as much. He, he does find a woman out there still. Um... Although he's trying to get past the whole Christine thing back at the Paris Opera environment. But in the meantime, he's still trying to move it to this day. And trying to move past that uh, trauma that he had been through. In fact, almost trying to kill Rolf for all it's worth. So that is, of course, of Eric's ending and of Christine's as well in this session. Thank you all so much for watching.